editing Natasha here. I am borrowing that phrase from Chevy, from Chevy Rell's uh, Stuff podcast, where she will occasionally uh, pop in a little bit of a note uh, while editing. So I wanted to jump in here for two reasons. Uh, one, uh, we filmed this episode about two weeks ago and maybe a little bit more and I've been moving and it was a little bit overwhelming so I just didn't get a chance to edit and post this most recent episode. So I wanted to thank you all for your patience um, and bear with us through this transition uh, that I'm going through and um, we will film in another week or two so there will be more episodes coming but it just took a little bit of time for me to get a little bit more settled um, in the new place uh, before posting. And then two, we also filmed this episode uh, before what's happening in Ukraine happened. So I wanted to acknowledge that um, it's been, you know, really, really heartbreaking. Uh, we are lucky to not be directly affected by it, um, but I do have some coworkers who have family and friends in the Ukraine. Um, so it's been, um, I've been trying to support them in any way I can and I've made a donation through work where my, my company matches my donation and my mom has done that as well and um, I wanted to also I also made a donation to Razam for Ukraine. Um, Razam I believe means together in Ukrainian um, but they are providing medical supplies and aid um, so I will put that link below in case you would like to learn more about that uh, foundation. Um, so my heart goes out to everyone affected by this and um, I just wanted to acknowledge that um, before uh, getting into the meat of the content um, that we have here. Um, so is there anything else I wanted to note here? I honestly don't remember everything we talked about. I'm just settling down to do some editing. Um, so hopefully Everything else will be uh, par for the course, as they say. I think that's what it is. It's funny filming this without my mom here. I'm just talking to myself. Um, so it feels a lot more awkward. So big props to everyone that does this on their own. It feels out of, out of the norm to me. Um, so thanks again for your patience. Happy you're here. And um, without further ado, here's the episode. Hello and welcome. My name's Petra. As usual, I'm here with my lovely daughter, Natasha. Hello. <laughs> we are Knit Inc. Yeah, we are. It's, it's <laughs> our YouTube, together we're Knit Inc, our YouTube channel where we talk about all things knitting, wool and yarn and fibery related. Yep. And this is episode 27. Yep. Welcome. It's been about a month since we last recorded, mm -hmm. but I think about two weeks since the last episode went up because yeah. we we recorded three episodes in one long weekend in January, um, and this is the first time I've been back down to Connecticut since then. It's another long weekend here in the states. It is President's Day weekend, so it's Sunday, the twentieth, and yes, it is. Um, I have tomorrow off work. So, what have we been doing? Um, Let's say welcome. Welcome, oh, to yeah. our, welcome to our returning viewers. Thank you very much. And welcome to any new viewers. Welcome too. Yeah, we're glad you're here. I'm a little out of sorts today, so um, hopefully I we'll kick get into high gear here. I'm rhythm. a little out of practice or something. I feel like off, but... Um, a little out of practice. Well, we did go for a walk. It's a beautiful... Yeah sunny day but quite chilly there's a bitter bitterly cold wind mm -hmm. and we did take the naughty puppy andre for a walk this morning he loves to choose his leash natasha was going to try to do some filming but at least we'll get a yeah. picture of him in right yeah it was hard to do so I, I took a video when we got back to the house and he was running around the yard after i took the collar and leash off of him and he was happy to be free um he's yeah. just He's very excitable and wants to be involved with everything. So he, um, this weekend, he took, a, he took a lot of energy out of me this weekend. <laughs> well, he, he got so excited with Natasha and John coming to visit yeah. and, and John's brother, all these new people all of a yeah. sudden and Anna. So he's been 
uh, hyper, to say the least. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. It, it has been a little bit draining. Yeah, it's just like having a, a little toddler around yeah. on full force all the time. But so, we love him. Yeah, he is adorable, yes. Anyway, so what did I do? I went up to Vermont. Um, mm-hmm. We had a week up in Stowe, um, up at the Von Trapp Lodge, which was really beautiful. Mm-hmm. I Someone reached out to in, me on Instagram, but we were only there for half the week um, at Stowe. And I was leaving the day you reached out, if you're watching this. Um, and then we went to our friend's wedding um, the second part of the week, Um down in Chittenden, Vermont, Mm -hmm. Um, and that was beautiful. It was my first winter wedding, and my friend Julia, who also knits, got married, and she had, um, she's going to send me a photo, so I will hopefully get a photo from her and put it in here of her white mitt um, gloves that she knit. You might be able to hear the dog barking. Um, So that was fun. It it was like lightly snowing, um, and the ceremony and everything was inside, but it was at a beautiful beautiful inn with a view and everything so that was nice Mm -hmm. um and I guess you're you're off to Colorado this week so Mm -hmm. we are doing some winter winter excursions yes yeah Um, I'm gonna be skiing and I haven't been skiing for I think seven years so that's gonna be interesting I'm hoping it's like learning like riding a bike that it'll come back I'm sure it will I'm gonna start on the green slopes I think yeah, so, start slow, rent a helmet. And, rent a um, helmet, yes. You'll be good. And it's a long journey, so I'm planning what knitting to take, of course. Oh, yeah. That's and then a, I have to pack. I, I love the planning for plain knitting. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm not going to have to do anything. I can just sit there and knit for four hours, and it's totally fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and a book to listen to, a yeah. book to download, or pod, something to listen to, yeah. podcasts, yeah. And, and then you're all set, I know. I'm kind of looking forward to that as well. Yeah, that is kind of uh, exciting. Okay, so, Natasha, what are you wearing today? Okay, so this is my Watayuki. And it's the second one I've made. Um, the first one was white. This mm-hmm. is using the Lana Grossa Peru Tweed. That you got when we were in Northampton last year. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's already last year. It was in November, but last mm-hmm. year. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and John really likes this yarn. He was, and I kept asking him, like, what do you like about it? Do you like the color? Do you like the flex? And he was like, it looks kind of like a galaxy. He's like, I like everything it about it. It looks like a galaxy. So it's like oh. the combination of the dark background with kind of like the stars and everything. So it's a, kind of like sweatshirty. It's a little big. And I think you can kind of see the excuse my joggers <laughs> I think you can kind of see here it's um switches to pearl with like a, a growing separation here the pattern has it split um a split seam is that what it is yeah, yeah split hem I split guess. hem that's it um so that the section where there's the pearl that ends and then you have a longer front and a longer back but I just did it all in the same um and I did, this was a slightly different gauge, so I knit a size bigger than I did last time um, on size, a size smaller needles. So the fit's a little different. It grew a little bit. The sleeves are a little baggy. Again, it's dark, so it's kind of hard to tell. Mm-hmm. But it's, again, it's super soft, and I just have a tank top underneath, so it's, it's, it's like I could wear a long sleeve, a thin long sleeve if I wanted to, too. But it's very um, cozy and easy to wear. You know, I, I know it's you... It's hard to see things when they're dark on camera, but... but it's got these really copper flex, and mm-hmm. you know what? You could really dress this up if you wanted to, like with black trousers or a black right. skirt, a nice necklace. A long necklace. Yeah, yeah that's I mean, true. And I know you said it's like sweatshirty, but you could... Re- it's it's actually a pretty elegant sweatshirt look. Right. I think. <laughs> it's really beautiful. And the, the cuff, the ribs, it's a broken broken rib but again it's dark so it's kind of hard to see Mm -hmm. um in the camera but yeah i this went up this knit really quickly this is all the yarn i have left Um, i wrote down 30 grams left and these are 50 gram balls i would assume so yeah Yeah. 50 gram balls and we got five i think i got five of these so it took just over four yeah 
So that's a nice light sweater. So I have a black version of this, right? Which is on my long list of sweaters to knit. And now that I'm seeing yours, I'm kind of excited to. Uh, it it went cast really that on. really quickly. What size needles did you use? Let me reference Ravelry. <laughs> I need to put some photos of this up. Um, yeah. So I use size eight. Oh, okay, that's what I'm swatching with now. And I haven't put in my. Um, I haven't put in my total yardage here yet. Okay, you will. I gotta add that in. Yeah. I will do that today. Um, so I started it January 13th and I finished it February 3rd. So, so. Th about three weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. What are you wearing? I am wearing my November sweater, which I finally finished. It's called Maybe Queen by La Maison Really. really? La Maison Really. Yeah. I like that. Um, so this this was resting for a while. It's the November sweater that I didn't finish in November, but it's one of my thirty plus UFOs that I did finish. So I'm excited about that. Um, the yarn is, excuse me, while I grab the label, is Madeline Tosh colorway and, antler. Yeah, and it's a uh, fifty percent merino and fifty percent superwash. Oh no, 50% merino wool, 50% silk. Oh, that's what I meant. What did I say? 50% merino, 50% superwash. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. We are out of practice. <laughs> it, it's that. And so I did block it and I was nervous that it seemed to have really grown and it's really heavy. I think I used 600 grams. Um, I've got just three little nuggets left that oh, I was wow. going to show, but... I'm going to st stand up and show you, but I put it in the dryer a little, a little for a brief period of time on super delicate when it was almost dry. And I think that did help to yeah. shrink it up a little bit. So I, I am pretty happy. You can see there's the, this twisted, um, twisted, raglan. twisted raglan. Yeah. Twisted switch, some little, t twisted stitches here and they go all the way down the sides and then the, it, this does have a split hem this is so cool it's got garter ridge here and the back is slightly longer than the front and it's tubular i did tubular everything <laughs> tubular bind on tubular bind off natasha helped me with um the bind offs and um yeah and it's got a twi it's got twisted ribs tubular and everything and um Today, I, I, today's the first day I'm wearing it. It just dried this morning. I think I, I finished it on Friday. Okay. Yeah. So I want to say a big thank you to a lot of you who reached out after my our last episode suggesting that I watch this podcast that I am blanking on the name now, but the lady suggested Finish It Fridays. She had a whole episode on how to tackle if you're you old. I'll put it down here. Yeah. I, I didn't like refresh my memory. Yeah, Natasha put it down here. Um, anyway, this lady, she has a podcast every Tuesday. And um, a very professional podcast. And she had some tips on... Not like this one. <laughs> yeah, not like this one. She has some tips on how to tackle a backlog of UFOs. And one of the suggestions is that every Friday you just work on UFOs, finish it Fridays. Yeah. And so that's what I've been doing. Um, and I, I, so I finished this sweater. Yeah. And I finished a pair of socks that I just found when I was looking for something else. And I gave them to your brother-in-law as a gift. So we mm -hmm. don't have them to show, but so there's, so I've got two whips, fin two, UFO, two UFOs finished. And I'm making some progress on knit bingo. So cool. I'm happy about that. So I just want to s show that this is all I've got left. Wow, that's quite the yarn chicken yarn. win. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I'm happy that I don't have any more left. And I did do some helical knit knitting oh, for yeah. the bo body because I was worried that you'd be able to tell when I changed right here. But you know what? Blocking took care of some of the issues that I was worried about. Nice. A classic and, blocking solves all problems. <laughs> yes. And because I was worried that there was too much bulk here, I yeah. had missed. There's, yeah, it actually falls okay. And it, Oh, and I forgot to mention there's some nice details on the sleeves too. Oh, yeah, that, that, that carries through. Yeah. Nice. So it's a, it's a nice pattern. I would definitely do it again. Yeah. yeah. 
Cool. So it's DK weight, if I didn't say that. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Before we get into FOs, I just want to say thanks to everyone for your comments, especially on the Q&A, because I think we missed mm-hmm. a couple of questions. One, um, one viewer had asked that when we said what we do for a living to include Anna. Oh, yes. um, so she actually just started a new role at her company. So, And she is trying to get working on a little sweater for her friend's baby. So maybe in the next episode or two, we'll have her come on and she can share that herself. So we haven't forgotten. Mm-hmm. And the, uh, one of the other questions I remember now was, um, when did you come to the States? Oh, okay. So do you want to quickly answer that? Yes. So I'm putting you on the spot. Like okay. I'm putting you 100% on the spot here. But Well, that's okay. It's we not... didn't really plan this episode out so much, so here we go. Well, it's not something, it's not exactly a difficult question, you would think, right? right. When did we move to the States? You kind but of know it. Everything about my, everything, nothing straightforward. So we first came to the United States, um, my husband and I, when we were students. He was doing a PhD and I was doing an undergraduate degree we came on an exchange program to Wisconsin Madison for one year and then we moved back to England and after that I didn't know you moved back yeah I had to finish my first degree and dad had to finish his PhD oh wow how many years did you move back for just one year oh okay um and while we were that while we were in the U.S. that year we kind of figured out that we were going to move to La Jolla. Dad was going to do a postdoc. So basically, after we finished our studies, we moved to the United States. There's a funny noise, right? Yeah, what is that? Oh, it's, it's the, the fire. fire. It's the fire <laughs> crackling. Um, so basically, my whole adult adult life, I've lived in the United States. So you moved to La Jolla. I was born yeah. there in San Diego. Mm-hmm. Then we moved to North Carolina. North Carolina when I was under a year, right? Yes, you were nine months old. And then Anna was born there in Durham. And then we moved up to Connecticut when I was like six and a half. So yes. I spent the majority here in CT. Good yeah, old this, this Connecticut. is Connecticut. This is the place we've lived the longest, over 25 years. Wow. A little small village in, in New England. Yeah, yeah, feels like home. And I think there was another question or two. If I remember, if it comes to me while we're doing this episode, I'll just pop it in. Okay. Um, if not, I'll try and remember to write it down for next time. Um, and I do want to remember two things at the end. I'm saying this for us to remember and okay. for you, you folks, if you want to stick around at the end, we have... A bunch of acquisitions. Um, we were inspired by we. It was ninety percent you, and then I I crept in at the end there um, to get some holst. And I think you are we used that in our thumbnail, so you got a little preview there. So there was that and a few other things. And then there's some there's some fun podcasts and other YouTube channels that we've been checking out over this past month. I think that's something we've been doing. Um, we've been introduced yes. to a lot of new. Um, new people um and that's been really fun Mm -hmm. so we will give some shout outs to some folks we've been watching at the end as well and i'm sure other things will come up yes that's anyway so shall i go back to our regularly scheduled programming of of fos yes let's do that okay okay so i think last it might have been the most recent episode i think it was um Mm -hmm. yeah because i talked about the um set of mini skeins my dad got me for christmas from the Gray Sheep Co. via the Woolly Thistle. So there were four of these skeins and I wanted to make a color work hat from this book, Alternate, that I also got um, in a Christmas book exchange from work. Um, So I decided, and I think, I'm pretty sure my my memory serves that I've already talked about this. You did. You you decided on the motifs. Yeah. So and you were struggling with the size. Yes. So I did struggle with the size throughout this project. Mm. Um, I will insert here. Here is the finished object. Do 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 do. And then Lovely. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a photo right here, and you can see what it looked like before I ripped back and tried to make it smaller. So, the. The pattern has you knit for a set number of inches before you do the crown decreases. And I found that I, I needed to take like a whole inch, maybe inch and a half less than that before I did the crown decreases Gosh. because it got really big. And I ended up actually casting on 
and doing the smaller size, there was just two sizes in the pattern, the smaller size through here and then I increased on this gray section to do the larger. Um, and I probably could have stayed small the whole time. So mm -hmm. it is like if I pull it all the way down, Gosh, that's not it's a little big, but yeah. I can just kind of have it sit up a little. Mm -hmm. And I added these little tassels. They're really cute, the tassels. And you have a tassel maker, right? Yes, I used the Katrinkles um, tassel making kit. I posted a photo of Instagram. Those are really fun to use. Mm -hmm. And the inside, I used some oh. yak yarn or Tibetan yarn that was yak from my brother-in-law. So the inside is um, super soft for my ears. And I, yeah, I chose the motifs through from from this book that were at the end here. But I did, yeah, I, I had to rip back twice to Gosh, do, so not the whole way, but rip back for the crown decreases. And then I just did like some striping up at the top. But what I was excited about was my yarn management. So oh. I only have, there was four sets of, four colors in this set. And this is what I have left from the three colors I used. I didn't end up using this color at all because it was so similar to this one mm -hmm. that I'd have to use, I wouldn't use them next to each other. And then I was like, while I was working through it, I kind of made this up as I went along, you know, choosing the motifs as I went mm -hmm. along. I was like, well, I don't really need to break into this one even if I do the gray or the burgundy in between, I might as well just try and use up as much as I can of these three. Mm -hmm. And then I can just save this for something else. So there's definitely more of the burgundy left, but like barely any of the teal. So oh, yes. I was proud of that. And I need to, I don't think I updated this in Ravelry yet either. But yeah, I think um, I, I am still excited about this book, but I am cautious about the, some of the sizing um, particularly with because of that hat, but I will give something else a go. And I know that you are, you might talk about this next time, but you are about to cast on a hat using, doing some motifs from here as well with yeah. that same yarn. So, um, yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I have another oh, set. The yarn is really gorgeous. It's yeah. blocked beautifully. And I have never done this before, this like edging here. It's like a pico edging. Yeah. And you do that with knit two together yarn over. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so cute. That was a really fun thing to learn. Mm -hmm. I had never done that before. That is nice. I'm going to try to make Anna a hat with my set of minis with some flowers. She's having, she's having a big birthday coming up, and she was having a floral, um, floral motif party. That's I don't it. think That's she's calling much. it floral motif. I think she's calling it a, like a flower celebration or something. Okay. Her birthday's around the beginning of spring in March. So I'm just organizing some labels here. Um, <laughs> so that's a little bit of a theme for her. So that's, okay. that's, a, that's an FO I've got. Okay. I've got some other little, I've got just little FOs beyond, um, beyond this sweater. And I think I may have finished a little small children's sweater that you I already gave away. You finished the one that you were working on with this same yarn. Yeah, and then I did a little floral one, but that's okay. So, we'll, do you have photos? I have photos. A couple photos here. Do okay, do do do. of some finished baby sweaters. Yeah. Well, actually, they tend, they ended up being too big. I need, I've really been struggling with sizing. And here's an example. So, this is Superwash DK yarn that I used for a sweater. And I wanted to make a hat for a baby and the baby's older eight-year-old brother. Well... They're both about the same size. They're both about the same size. And neither of them is the right size. Huh. So I did cast on another one. I think I'm just going... I, I feel like these will fit maybe two to three-year-olds, maybe. Right. Yeah. Um, the, the, uh, the, it's a free pattern. It's called... Oh, scallop. Little Scallops. Little I've Scallops. I've yeah. this pattern before. And what I was saying to you, the hard thing about this is that you've got floats with the rib, right after the ribbing, where you do the scalloped edges here. Mm -hmm. So you've got the floats in the bottom, which make it hard to stretch. Yeah, there's a limit. You can feel resistance. Yeah, but there's yeah. the ribbing, the ribbing itself could go further, but because of the color work, it stops. So it's almost like this bottom bit is stretchier than this bit. So you, you don't have as much flexibility 
with sizing when you're yeah. when you're kind of working through it. So it's a really cute pattern, but I think if you don't have the sizing quite right, it can be hard to kind of fudge it. Yes. So this was supposed to be the newborn one, which is zero to six months in the pattern. And I knit it more or less to the pattern, but it's it's too big. Yeah. And then I increased this one, but for some reason I, I made it too short. So I'm working on a bigger one now for the big brother, and then I'll go back who and are do the, a baby one. I don't know. I'll just give don't. these to people, to some yeah. little children that I just happen to see. <laughs> just start just <laughs> seeing people on the street. Does your child need a hat? <laughs> um, or I could donate these. Yeah, They're I'm, really I'm not going to unpick them. No, no, they will, well, go, they will go to someone's yeah. head, but... Yeah. yeah, they're cute. There's, I love, and it would be cute if they were related because I love the, mm-hmm. I love the matching but not quite matching. You know, yeah, if they're really cute. They should go to siblings. I might give them to these two little boys anyway, just four hats to kind of mix and match as they grow or to give to their yeah. cousins or something like that. Yeah. So that's they won't that's, they won't be wasted. Yeah, I need to make some notes about hats or sizing. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that's one. Do you have any more FOs? Yeah, I do, actually. Oh, so okay. I had cast, I will talk about this um, whip I've cast on momentarily, mm. but it's on size two needles. Gosh. And it is very slow going. So after um, I finished this sweater, I cast this on at the beginning of February. So this has been about two weeks of knitting, which is like slow going for me. So I needed something a colorful because I had been working with this, and this, and my my blanket, which I'll show in a minute, which is um, oh, yeah. gray, <laughs> black, <laughs> white, and gray. And I was like, I need color, and I need a quick project. Um, and I also I'm also moving at the beginning of March, so I was like, I should use something from Stash. Like I have all these really nice special single skeins. So I just looked at my single skeins. And I picked yarn. Oh, I don't think I've seen this whip. I'm starting to get excited about what this might be. <laughs> so I, I kept the label, but I already cut it down. But it was this oh. sweet, sweet Georgia Superwash DK, this purple. And it was 115 gram skein. It wasn't quite... Um, it oh, wasn't a big skein, but it wasn't a mini skein. Okay. Only 256 yards, so not not huge. I like how you do that, the yarn and the label, and you put that in your little notebook. Yeah, so this is my... It's mildly organized. These are the ones that need to be taped, but I put in... And I think I showed this. This is like... This is for 2022. Oh, oops. So these are like what I finished, and then I do like little swatches of them. So, um, everything's... A little disorganized today. That's okay. a nice <clears throat> notebook with the peacocks, though. Yeah. I don't remember where I got this. Oh, it's Paper Chase. I actually got this in oh. England um, at, a, at a shop called Paper Chase, which is kind of like um, in the U.S. if you've gone to, like, Paper Source. It's mm-hmm. like a really beautiful stationery shop. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was attracted to these fun peacocks, and it's, yeah. and it's metallic. Um, okay, so I just oh, made this, this little tiny sweater. Oh my gosh, that is so and cute. And this is the bubble sweater by, oof, I'll just call her Victoria, but there's the full name. Um, and I haven't blocked this yet. I did the smallest size, and if I saved... Did you say that this is DK Young? Yeah, this is DK, and okay. I... I played some serious, I planned this out to use as much as I could. I think I had about a yard left. And the way I planned it is I did, it's knit top down. And I, after I split for the sleeves, um, I, as a raglan, I did maybe like an inch of the body. Mm -hmm. And I was debating like, do I keep going? I don't want to necessarily have to do a join. But then there was a bit in the yarn that had been... It wasn't knotted, it was kind of felted together, but oh. you can tell it had been a join, and I was like, okay, perfect. I'll just cut this here and come back to the body. I did my two sleeves, and then I came back to the body, and I, was, I wasn't I was weighing, but I was keeping an eye how much how much to go. Mm-hmm. And when I did, when I changed for the ribbing, I, when I had a ball about, I don't know, and a little bigger than this, 
I unwound it and like wound up the opposite so that I had the tail access. And what I did is I measured um, three times the circumference of the hem, put a removable stitch marker like in the yarn so that it would, wouldn't move. You know what I mean? Like I put it Mm -hmm. through the, through the Twist. twist so that I knew was that was when I needed to do my cast off. So then I like rewound that so I could knit until that I saw that stitch marker and was close to it and then I knew, okay, it's time to cast off. And that's kind of how I figured. And it, because this was such a small scale, mm-hmm. it was easy to do that. I think it might be a little bit more challenging when you are um, doing an adult size. But I did the smallest size. This pattern, I, I think it was a couple bucks. Um, but it actually goes up to full adult size. It does like wow. zero to six months or zero to three months or three months to six months all the way to adults. Um, and I liked that it was simple but had some interest on the sleeves and then the body was knit in it. So I did this in maybe a week or so. Um, but it was a nice thing to just do quickly. Mm-hmm. I had been kind of over hats because I had done a bunch of hat gifts. I had just done this hat. Mm -hmm. So normally my like quick go-to is a hat. So I was like, you know what? This will be a quick one skein project. So that'll be blocked and we'll see who this goes to. But, um, so I really like that it's tiny because I was aiming to make a tiny sweater for some babies that have been born recently and all mine turned out really big. So I need to revisit this Re- revisit that pattern yeah i love how this yarn is tonal too mm. isn't that pretty sweet georgia does beautiful tonal yeah. yarns yeah and i had gotten this yarn i had signed up for like a um the yarn yarn yay box oh, or okay. a knit crate box i did a couple subscription boxes um and i think this was supposed to, i forget what this was i think it was supposed to be for a cowl hmm. like a lacy cowl or something like that and i just really liked the yarn i was like i'll save it for something Now it's been used. Very nice, Natasha. Oh, thanks. (laughs) Okay, so I have one more FO that's here. And that's these fingerless mitts that I made. My sister-in-law had requested some fingerless mitts and she had actually bought me wool for it, which is this 100% merino. um, In purple. In purple, British wool. And I loved working with this. Um, it had like some unexpected, I don't know if you can see, but there's unexpected pops of color in it, like little pieces of red and bright blue. Um, and it's, re- it's really soft. So it's a DK weight, 100% wool. I have blocked them. The, the pattern's called Sarah Basic Fingerless Mitts. And um, it is a free pattern on Ravelry by... I had to find a bit of blue. Joanna Gitzvik. <laughs> oh, thanks. It's like an electric blue almost, isn't yeah. it? And it used just less than... Where's that ball of yarn? Just less than 50 grams. In fact, this is how much I had left over from the first ball. Nice. There's three sizes in this pattern, and this is the medium. Um, and I did them on... DP ends. They the, feel so nice. The reason I've got this end here is because I bound this off a bit too tightly. I'm going to redo that. The other one is fine. I think I knit them slightly shorter. I mean, maybe you don't need this really long cuff, but I feel like it's nice if you if it's on a cold day, you can really tuck under like this and you have nothing showing, mm-hmm. or you can fold them over. So mm-hmm. I hope they fit her. I hope she likes them. And I've got one left where I may make a pair for myself. Yeah. They are. They are. I'm sure these went really quickly. Oh, yeah. They did go really quickly. What size and needles did you use? Six. For the whole thing? Yeah. Uh, no, I did. And the pattern uses just one size needle. I did switch to size five mm. for... No, I, I tell a lie. It's not six. This is DK weight yarn, but I actually used size four us size four and then i did the ribbing this ribbing in size three because it brings it in a little bit nicely i i i, I did right. it in size four first but it was too flary i didn't like how it looked so i redid it and then the cuff is in you in us four and i'm sorry i can't remember the metric conversions um so it's it's knit 
quite a tight gauge but mm -hmm. usually I would use, but you want that for me you want you want that for mittens yeah, yeah. so um, yeah one nice FO they blocked out nicely so these will be sent to England in time for the spring <laughs> hopefully she'll be able to use them next winter or oh, I might wait no I think I'll just send them to her yeah well I just need to re, re redo that yeah um, yeah those can go off this week probably yeah when I, I think when or I when come, you come back from Colorado when I come back from yeah. Colorado yeah they'll be going in the mail nice so that and that was that was something on your um knit bingo was that it was not? on my knit bingo yep yeah. yeah very nice so I'm I'm maybe Natasha will insert an update I don't have a bingo yet but I think I'm two squares away from the diagonal and on it's only the, month two it's only month two yes I have one more fo and I don't know if you guys will be able to hear this but my dad and husband are watching a movie, so if there's background ambient noise, that's what that is. I'm not sure if you're going to pick it up. Anyway, so I have one more FO, and I had mentioned, well, I, I'm considering this an FO, but it could keep growing. <laughs> okay, that's so, a funny one. It this, might count twice as an FO. Huh? Yeah, I had talked last time, I had all these squares, and I put a photo, and I wasn't sure if I was going to do 24 squares or 25 squares for the Optic Blanket by Pearl Soho. That's I right. made it to 25 squares, and I have just a little bit left of the color changing yarn, which is the the black, black and white that you see here, and then I have one full skein and this skein left. So, do you mind helping me? We'll just yeah, hold this up well. a little bit. I will take a photo at some point, but... Mm. This is, um, I haven't measured it, but it's, it's a decent lap size blanket. I wouldn't be, oh, it wouldn't, it would be too small for a queen bed. But um, it would be, it would be a twin bed. A twin bed, it could work. And it's a square too, so it's a little funky. Um, so I ended up just doing mattress stitch of putting all these together. Oh, but you did a really nice job, Natasha. And I say, is it done? Because I'm wondering if I should do a crochet border around the edge and use up some of this or not. Hmm. I can't okay. decide. I it's kind of like what else am I gonna use this yarn for? And I could I guess I could make it a rectangle if I wanted to and just do do it on two sides, but I don't know how that would look. Yeah, no, I wouldn't do that. So you're thinking of a crochet border just like a, a, a real narrow, more like a yeah, finishing? Yeah. Okay. And I don't really crochet, so and you you just dabble in it, really. Yeah. So if anyone has any suggestions of like what stitch I should look up to learn how to do that. Or what would be a nice finishing. Yeah, if there's some sort of crochet edge I should try doing, um, I would be happy to learn about that because I'm really at a loss of what to do. Um, and, and that would be easier than doing a garter garter ridges, like a garter edging. Yeah, that would right? be crazy. That would be... It's just too long. Yeah, I mean, I guess if each of these is, each of these are like probably ten inches, so it's like fifty inches across, and they might even like stretched almost a foot. I mean, it's like almost five feet, right? By five feet. I guess you could do. I'm just thinking if you were to knit it, you could, you could pick up. It would be a lot. Is it about twenty? Is this about twenty rows? Actually, no, it was, it was, um, it was about 40. It's about, about 40. 40. So it would be 40 stitches. It would be really long rows. Yeah. It yeah. would be much easier to do a cro crochet edge. I think knitting is out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I kind of already thought that. So, um, yeah, it's, there's one square that is kind of funky. It's in, I, I noticed, I don't know what I did, but I put it in the corner. This one, it like goes into a swirl. Huh? I don't know what I did there, but see how the others, it just goes in like an X. So I put this in the top corner because it was kind of the odd cute. one out. That's I, like I don't know. I could not replicate this because I did this <laughs> over the course of like, I guess, four years, um, hmm. three and a half years. I put it down for a while and then I'd pick it up and do like, you know, five squares mm -hmm. and then put it down again. So I guess at one point I accidentally did this when I picked it back up. So this feels good to be done ish that's a good one <laughs> and your one odd square reminds me of the Amish who when they make their Amish quilts they have one little error mm, on purpose it makes right it, oh yeah you've always it, told it me about makes that makes it kind of unique yeah so here it is and I do want to say so we have a new um, YouTube channel friend Mega 
and she has, I'll put her name in info below, she has Skeins of Dreams um, podcast. podcast. Uh, I think that's what she calls it, Skeins of Dreams or Skeins of Dreams channel. Um, but she's Skeins of Dreams on Instagram and she's doing a blanket make-along for the whole mm. year. Oh, wow. So um, I, I'm a little late because I've kind of finished mine, but if you have a, you know, a fledgling... Mm-hmm. Is fledgling the right word? I think so. Fledgling. Blanket. Bucket, yeah. Um, hanging around and you'd like to get it done in 2022, um, check check out that make-along and follow Mega. So that's that's someone new that we've been checking out. So that's recommend nice, that Natasha. as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That Great. Is that is a big off. FO. It was definitely yes. warm, keeping my lap warm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's it for FOs, right? Yeah. Uh, Do you want to talk about the, those down there that um they're kind of finished oh, yes. objects but not by not us not by us yes look at these amazing stockings so a friend of mine um shared these with me he's got four pairs they're really f- he used to wear them for cross country skiing with the what you call knickers the knee length kind of wool trousers mm-hmm. and these um he's got four did i already say he's got four pairs are they all the same color different colors mm. Um, so he let me borrow these to show. I mean, they are exquisite. Look at that. So nice. They're over 50 years old and they show almost no signs of wear, really. He's I feel like they have after them. I feel like they haven't really been I mean, worn. He has worn them. Look at that. This is They the, have been worn a little, but yeah. like they are in great condition. They really are. And I had made him a pair of socks and he had worn holes in the socks about here, like an odd place that I repaired. Maybe it's like the back of his shoe or something. It must be his back of his shoe rubbing, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I wanted to share these. I'm pretty sure they they came from Norway. I mean, they've got the Norwegian-looking mm-hmm. star here, don't they? The, the Selbu star, yeah. And they feel really great, don't they? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Super warm, yes. So, an F.O. An Not old by us. F.O., <laughs> yes. Okay, so... Whips. Whips. Let's move on to our current whips. Current whips. I'll go. Okay. Although I yeah. just went. Do you want to go? Okay. I will. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to. I'll talk about my uh, my birthday cast on. Okay. So I got. I had ordered some yarn that was a gift certificate from the yarnery in Minneapolis. And interestingly enough, another podcast that we watched, Jonathan's Days. When he went to the U.S., he visited the yarnery. Oh yeah! And he talked about it in in one of in one of his January in his January podcast. He talked a little bit about his trip to the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've never been to the yarnery, the actual store, but I did call them. It took me a, it took me a year to figure out what yarn yeah, I wanted to buy. Yeah, and this gift certificate was from your last last year's birthday, right? Yeah, and so in mid January, I ordered. I finally decided to go with Shelter by. Brooklyn Tweed and um, it took me a while to decide on a color but then I had to narrow it down to which color they had six six skeins available for and this color the color I chose was plume I must admit when it arrived it was a lot darker than I thought it it was from the website Um, it is a dark purple so I'm knitting the Felix sweater but in sun, in the sunshine, yeah, a lot of people have knitted this yeah. sweater. Um, in the sunshine, it does. You can see the purple, and there's loads of really gorgeous flecks. It's kind of similar to the gloves that I just showed, actually. It's so light. It is it's, incredibly light. It's very airy. And I am using um, size nine, five point five millimeter needles. So this is knitting up quite quickly. Yeah. So I decided to do the sleeves after I split for the body and I finished a skein of yarn. I decided to finish the sleeves and that way I'll just use the rest of the yarn on the body. And I also do like doing the sleeves before the full body because you've got less of a sweater to be turning round and mm, round. Yeah. It's much light, although this is light anyway, but it's so that's sort of my usual method. So now I'm just on the body and I will knit until I am close to running out of yarn. It will be quite a long rib. I'll match what I did in the on the cuffs. I know it's very hard to see, but again, I'm going the tubular. Natasha helped me 
with this tubular bind off last night. Um, and so this is basically a raglan with some pretty cool yarn overs. I yeah. know it's going to be hard to see. I think you can see it. Yarn overs for the raglan increases. Right. Which make this pattern sort of unique. And right off the bat, after you've done the ribbing, you do a bunch of short rows. I put this little marker in here so that I know that that's the back. You do a bunch of short rows that go all the way past the raglan, right up to the front. And you're starting all these yarn overs. So I know one of you was struggling with um, doing the short rows and the yarn overs and placing the stitch markers at the beginning. And I must admit, I had to really concentrate too. And what helped me was to use different colored markers and refer to them by, by color and number. Because mm. when you read the pattern, when you read the row, it just says, you know, knit to one stitch before for, before marker. It doesn't, it's easy to get lost with the markers because there's eight markers and then you're doing short rows and so on. I've had that before too, where I've had to use some unique markers because I've gotten confused with the short rows. Yeah, so my advice is just take your time and read every single step, maybe print out the pattern and cross off when you get to each marker um, because it does work out perfectly. You just have to be patient and follow it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, a, a very popular pattern. It's a uh, worsted weight knit at a loose gauge and I'm looking forward to finishing it. This might be my aeroplane knitting just to finish this. There you go. And I'm, al I'm also going to try to finish my mild mania leggings so that I can wear them as a prey ski wear in Colorado. I feel like they'll be fitting. I only have this much to go on one leg. Those are perfect for apre ski. They are. So mm -hmm. that's I'm motivated to work on them. I fly out Tuesday morning. So I have a little bit of time. So this is my one of my active whips. Nice. My, nice, my nice. birthday cast on. So my whip is mm -hmm. The Birch Pullover by Andrea Mallory. And I had bought yarn also in Northampton, but this was at um, this was at Northampton Wools. I bought this at Webb's. Mm -hmm. And this is, where did my label go? Okay, this is Donegal Tweed. Oh, yeah. Um, ta ta by Taki Yarns. And it's a 70% wool, 30% mohair. Um, Made in, made in Ireland um, for Northampton Mass for Taki. So um, this pattern is a top-down raglan, and you can see the tweedy bits, mm -hmm. And um, but it has these, this detail here, I think you can see. Oh, yeah. It's borderline the color of the yarn, um, how you can see the texture, but it's, I think it's called broke, um, half fisherman's rib okay. I think is the pattern so yeah it's on size two and what's interesting is the the neck was knit in size two and the body's knit in size two and everything's everything's knit in size two Gosh. and the way this works is that you do one row of pearl one row of pearl one knit one through the bottom stitch knit pearl one knit one through the bottom stitch oh. so it's essentially Pearl one row and then knit knit one pearl one knit one pearl one but you do you do your knit ones in a yeah. different way. Okay. So when you do the knit one below, you kind of drop a little bit of a stitch, so that makes it a little bit squishier. So this is kind of like I don't know, it it has a little bit of the texture like brioche, mm -hmm. but it's not it's not knit in the brioche stitch. It's the half fisherman's rib or broken fisherman's rib. Mm -hmm. Um. So I'm obviously on the raglan de raglan increases right now. I'm just on my first first skein here, um, working through. Are these a hundred gram skeins? I think so. Um, and I wanted to call out some since you mentioned with your stitch markers with doing oh, yeah. um, short rows. Oh. So I'm I'm not doing. I did short rows. Um, actually, did this have short rows? I think that yes, this did have short rows. Um, but what I'm doing for my raglan increases, it's, you know how a lot of times you do like a knit one row and then you do your increase row, then you do a knit one row and your increase row when you're doing raglan? Mm -hmm. 
you only do your increased row on this every six rows. Gosh, okay. So, and then the you're doing the same row for knit the even numbers and the same row for odd numbers um, between those one and six um, rows. So to keep track, because it's not every other row, mm-hmm. so it's hard to know, oh, am I on my sixth row round, really, I should be saying, mm-hmm. um, for my increases. So what I've done is... It's what is also interesting is the beginning of round is actually in the middle of the front here. So that's my pink marker. And then I have my yellow markers um, for my raglan increases and I have them on each side. So then I have this loose stitch marker. And what I've done is my pink marker is essentially round zero. And then counting from there, I've got one, two, three, four, you know, I've got eight of these. Mm-hmm. So what I do is I move this white stitch marker after I start a round. So right now I'm on one, two, I'm on round four because this is on here. So you can see one, two, three, four. Oh. So every time I pass, I get to my pink stitch marker, I move this over. And after round six, I, I move it back over to round one. And that way I don't have to have something else with me to keep track. And I can put this down easily and pick it back up without wondering am I on the increase row or not? And I've actually started doing this even when I do raglan increases that are knit one, you know, do one regular and then do your increase row. And I just switch a removable stitch marker um, between, you know, my other my other stitch marker, my raglan increase markers. And I find it really helps to know um, at the beginning when your rows are, rounds are shorter, you're like, oh, it's annoying to keep changing this over you know to stop and do it but Mm -hmm. it helps in the long run to just literally stop for three seconds and move your stitch marker um so that's a tip but yeah i i'm i think this is this is a project where i'm excited for the finished object but the it's gonna be oh it's gonna take some time um so Mm -hmm. i don't think i've i've knit a net a sweater on size three needles before but it was just knitting you know, stockinette stitch, so it was easy peasy. But not only is this on size two, there's a lot of purling. Um, but, you know, Andrea, I've knit, knit quite a few Andrea Mowry patterns, and she does write really nice patterns. So yeah. it's um, well written and all that jazz, but I'm not complaining about the pattern. And I, sh- I, 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 you know, I bought the pattern, and then I was like, oh my God, this is on size two. Like, Wow. I could have taken a closer look, but I really wanted to do this pattern. Yes, so. it seems very popular, um, but it, it's going to be a labor of love. And you can just take your time with it, Natasha. Yeah, so just... I'm in t- I'm mixing other projects in between. Mm-hmm. Like I, That's why I did that little baby sweater, because I need to pause. Yes. So I have only done, I think, five increases, five or six increases, and I think I need to do 13 before I split for the... Sleeves. So yes, it's still little. <laughs> I love the your um, tip for how to keep track of rows. That's a really great idea. Yeah, Natasha. And it, I mean, I've done it before on the Knit Companion app, but I'm not. Then I have to either yeah. have my phone or my iPad, and it. I can just pick this up and look at this. I don't have to reference anything else. Right. You, you know? know exactly where you are, which I'm trying to find talking about keeping track of stitch markers of of rows one of my birthday presents from you was the knitting abacus box which i'm i put somewhere safe and now i can't find it i don't think i put it back in the box Hmm. well we wanted well i'll show this packaging while you look for it okay so i bought this on etsy for my mom it came in this um found it oh good this box and look it was sent Sent with love to our friend in Stonington, enjoy. And it came from Oklahoma. And there's a little heart with a little trail all the way to Connecticut. And she even put Stoning, like she must have looked up Stonington on the map because we're right in that corner there. So that was so sweet. And then um, it came with this beautiful packaging yeah. of, of this paper um, flower that's made with a recycled map. So I think you can see there the matte part there and it's this cute little rose and look at this nice brown tape and and this is the little bag that it came in and they make those from recycled maps too how cute is this with this like deckled edging can you see this 
the top of the bag is like deckled edging. Oh yeah, gosh, I didn't even notice that. And the and the little handles. It's it's um it's really amazing. We should. What is the name of the company? Oh yeah, we have so to... I have the. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Here we go. Okay, so again, this was on Etsy, and there's a lot of lot of things in here. I want yeah. to make sure I show the right thing. Okay, so Stacy Stacy Lee is this who I. Um, oh, okay, so there's a map thing. From around the globe with the globe in mind, which is cute. And so blue marble cards and more, Etsy.com. I hope that doesn't come out backwards. No, I don't think it will. It does the the reverse thing. Um, and yeah, Stacy Stacy Lee. And now I guess we should show what I actually bought. Yes, I know, <laughs> that's what I've been. So what Natasha actually bought is this knitting abacus with these little beautiful forget-me-not flowers that remind me of my mom. So it's called an accountability bracelet. Um, is that That's what it's marketed as, I guess. Mm -hmm. So it's you can use it for things like mark each glass of water you drink or record each serving of fruit or vegetable or keep track of exercise, um, use, doing, use during meditation, um, replace complaining thoughts with positive thoughts, and there's this whole little booklet in there so that's what it's marketed as but you can also use it as a row counter yes which is what i do so you just you just move that there's 12 you just move move a bead yeah every time you knit a row and the reason natasha got me this is when i was going through my old ufos in one of the bags i found an old knitting abacus that i'd had and it was broken and i remembered how much i'd love using it yeah. so Natasha got me this new one, and the the beads are really beautiful. Um, and this yeah, this and I lady, think you, you you pointed out the little flower. I did, yeah. but um, you can there was like maybe a dozen different um, little beads you could choose from, like um, an owl or a ladybug or other types of flowers. But I chose the forget me nots because my grandma really likes forget me nots. Yeah, and she draws them on her letters. So I'm trying to pull it anyway. So this lady also offers a rebeading service for if you use these a lot i guess they can have a tendency to break so that's how it is as a bracelet um so i think i'm going to send my old one to be rebeaded oh yeah so i'm really excited my old one actually has got two two strings so it can go up to 99 it's like the old style oh, of right, abacus right yeah yeah so this was one of my lovely birthday gifts thanks natasha you're welcome i'm very touched at how detailed and thoughtful the packaging was it was amazing yes. yeah i remember you facetimed me and you're like you have to see this and i was like wow and it wasn't an expensive bracelet either i have to say yeah. so very affordable and a, a lot of thought and effort went into it yes. yeah so what were we talking about oh whips yeah yes so i okay. talked about the birch pullover Okay, I'm going to talk about and my next whip then, which are these um, chunky socks made from the Icelandic lopi yarn called Hosu Band, hmm. which is, um, I guess it's classified as a super bulky maybe. Um, it does have, this is their one yarn that they do have some nylon in it, and it is marketed as a chunky sock yarn, so... Um, I'm just kind of making up a pretty simple pattern, um, two by two rib, this is the leg, I'm doing top down, I usually do bottom up, 10, 20, 30, I think I decided that I was going to do 40 rows, and I'm using these tiny little oh, they're needles, so little. but to tell you the truth, I'm not enjoying it as much big on this project, I'm going to switch to DPNs, but I didn't have the right DPNs at home, I mm. finally bought some yesterday. Um, and these are, these are again US size 8, which I think I said is, I think US size 8 is 5 millimeters. I can't read it. Um, so this is a 100 gram ball. I think I yeah. should be able to five get millimeters. these. I do have two balls. This was a gift from a friend of mine that went to Iceland um, a couple of years ago, pre-pandemic. So it's about time I used them. Yeah. And you can feel the lanolin in this yarn. Yeah. So I think I'm taking this on my trip too, because I could actually finish and wear them yeah. there. And and they'll go. You're just this, gonna this be finishing your wardrobe on your way. <laughs> yeah, because I'm only checking my bag, so my, you're my only knitting. No, you're not checking. I'm bag. not checking you're you're only bag. Carrying. I'm only carrying on, so my knitting has to also be my wardrobe, my apres ski. <laughs> 
because the ski pants will take up half, my, half winter, my luggage winter gear takes up so much doesn't it yeah so i'll be finishing a sweater a socks and leggings <laughs> nice maybe i should think about a hat too yeah anyway um so that's one of my whips um i just have one more and i've only done the swatch for it so i can talk about that Um, okay so actually my other two whips are at swatch stage two it's all about the swatching now we did some swatching so you show so i came home yesterday and there was a big box Mm -hmm. from denmark and I hadn't opened it. Yeah. So we had talked, I don't know, maybe two weeks ago. Um, well, when we last filmed, we were talking about how uh, how much to... you wanted 10 cones of Holst. Don't worry, we didn't get 10. But we got five. <laughs> so let me back up. So one evening I was reading the comments and some of you lovely viewers said, well, Holst has got a sale on now, 20% off some colors. And so I went online and I texted Natasha and we basically spent the whole evening going back and forth picking colors and went a little bit crazy and ended up ordering five cones of Super Soft. And um, I should have paid attention more carefully to one of you that said the most economical shipping is when you buy three, not five. Then I probably would have bought six. And then one of you lovely viewers said, well, people are holding their alpaca with the holst instead of mohair. And so I didn't share this with Natasha, but I went on, I spent quite a bit of time looking at all the colors of the alpaca, which is lace weight called Titi, titi I'm not, can't pronounce it. It's Lake, like Lake Titicaca. Titi like titi, <laughs> titi <kaka. laughs> Um... Yeah, I just spilled my tea. Did you? Yeah, there was a lot just happening. We're just gonna pause. <laughs> so, yes, I was, it was, first of all, it was so nice to see these colors IRL mm-hmm. after looking looking in at all the different, life. yeah, after looking at all the uh, colors online. And then I was extra specially surprised with the, actually, is this, this goes with this one, with the, does it go with this one? I'm not sh- sure which one, Well, that I, one. I know this goes with this one. There's yeah. we didn't bring everything over, but they're yeah. not exact. No, exactly the same color, but they're close. And you could do some fun marling, right? Oh yeah. I think so, nice. um, yeah. So instead of holding this with mohair, we're holding this with the holst with the titicaca, which is alpaca, which lace is weight alpaca, lace weight alpaca. Yes. Yeah. So, I started looking at patterns last night, and I found one. I really wanted to do something with texture. Um, but something that was going to be easier and quicker than the birch pullover. Mm-hmm. So I was looking at, um, you know, some some um, larger gauge uh, type projects. So I put in for sport, and I found this sweater called the lounge sweater, and I did a little swatch. And the way this this is called broken seed stitch. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm getting all confused with like fisherman's rib and broken stitch and all of that. Broken so, rib. Broken rib, yeah. Yes. Um, but this is this is done in it's um, a two row repeat of four stitches for each, so mm-hmm. it's pretty memorizable and it makes kind of like a a little bit of like a waffly. The, the knit the knit carries through. I just had this stitch marker to let me know what the right side was because um, it's it is kind of reversible. It is pretty much reversible, but I I wasn't hundred percent if it was going to be or not, so I was. Since it looks so similar on the front and the back, I, I needed to know which was which, but I think it's actually pretty much reversible. So I've just swatched and I'm actually holding two strands of this and one strand of this. So what I'll do is, I just wound off a little bit for the swatch. What I'll do is I'll wind off, um, uh, you know, maybe just like a hundred grams or something. Well, I mean, this sells in 50 gram bowls as yeah, well. Yeah, maybe so I'll you could just... do... 50 gram yeah i'll just do i'll just wind up on my winder like how much feels comfortable to start with and it's easy go. to um split 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 spit, spit splice and, yes. and join and all that so i'll be working with three strands um and i guess i could wind off two and like but 
It depends if you want to have it if portable, I want to be portable or, or not. Keep but it at home. Yeah, but I can always have other projects that I can be, uh, portable. be portable. And honestly, I'm not opposed to bringing this around. <laughs> I know when I was knitting from that cone, it's going to be exciting for us to keep track for how much we act, how many, how much, how many sweaters and things we can knit from all these, I know. this cone of yarn. And you'll notice, so we did like a whole pink and purple theme. Yeah. Um, I had been attracted to doing some like pale pink sweaters. I keep seeing like white and like blush sweaters on Instagram. And I was mm. like, I want one. So I, this was the color I gravitated to. And what's the name? It's underneath. It's written in there. Sweet pea. Sweet pea. Hmm. Yeah. And look, the cone has like stars on it, which is kind of fun. And some of them are like this one has, uh, this one has blue stars. This is damask. 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 I think I would so, say. you know, these could be yeah. color work and yeah. the possibilities are endless. So, we tried to pick colors that would coordinate together. Yeah. This is Jasper. It's pretty dark. But these three would go. This yeah. is a bit of an outlier. I, I really wanted that one. Yeah, this was the color you... We each kind of chose two colors or a color that we liked. This is hyacinth. And this is almond. Yeah, to so be neutral. sort of a light, a light neutral. It's... Um, yeah, I guess it's, it's slightly blushy. Um, so, yeah. It's so, a warm white. It's a warm white. Yeah. That's true, yeah. So I think we've got enough yarn. Yeah, we were all about using our stash. And here we are. And then a whole sale happened. Yeah, and the silly thing is that only one of these colors was actually in the sale. (laughs) But it's really affordable um, for especially the amount of yardage. This is going to last us a lifetime. (laughs) I think it's a long time. I was thinking of how much I knitted out of that my original blue cone yeah. it was a sweater for me a sweater for anna a hat and then a baby sweater and i think i still have 20 grams left wow i have swatched and i will oh use this jazz that's why i keep going like this mm. you use the first of all this smells really sheepy yes Andre loves, loves it <laughs> he was obsessed um but use this jasmine wool wash Mm-hmm. And the smells so good. Yeah, I got that at our local yarn store. Um, so I'm reminded that quite a few of you asked us about what are barber poles. And oh. <laughs> we say barber poles, but really it's the knitting barber and their barber cords. Right, I just assume barber pole. I just say that. We just, just say that, and they're just these cords. Yeah, I think quite a few people have been using them, and you can poke your needle yeah. through. It's like kind of like a tube. You can poke your needle in here and then gently pull this through mm-hmm. and then you can use this to try on. And I did this a lot for my hat. I did this quite a bit for this sweater. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes um, trying things on as you go so much less burdensome. Yeah. Even even like attaching, using a bunch of cords for your reusable new- needles can be tough um, because it they're kind of kinky. Yes. those cords this is a lot more flexible so you get a little bit more of the like actual drape and fit with it um so barber poles have nothing to do with knitting um we'll probably say it again it's but, the knitting barber but and that's yeah but um and people have said you can get these at different craft shops but we haven't explored that yet but um you can get them you ordered these oh i ordered them i think, I think. you ordered i ordered them. them from a yarn shop and then I found out that my local yarn shop, Driftwood Yarn, sells them. I think a lot of yarn shops are selling them. Yeah. The, the set Check comes out your local with, yarn shop. I bet they have them. Yeah. Once you, you get one 150 centimeter long one and two 75 centimeters. So that's... That's what we bought. But there might yeah. be different um, lengths that we're, we're at a shop near you. Yes. And I'm definitely thinking I would like more of these because I... When I... I left my um the felix i left the body on one of these when i knit the sleeves instead of using a a cord right and then you have you don't have to like have those being used yeah yeah and it's it's really great so i'm finding them really useful even though i think we were kind of late in the game to getting yeah i actually did that for this i put the body on the cord and i did like a loose knot um and then i because i needed i 
I think I was up in Vermont and I needed that cord to do my sleeves and I wanted to get the sleeves done. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I actually wasn't sure about the yarn chicken. I was like, I might need to use all of that. So all of the yarn, but I ended up having 30 grams left anyway. So, so it, instead of you, you waste yarn, it's, can oh be yeah. Used. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're not like picking up stitches again. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. So what are you, what did you swatch for? So I haven't swatched with the Hulst yet. I've got some other goodies that arrived that I w- want to work on. So one of the goodies that arrived is I got some yarn from Sweden. I managed to snag some yarn from Kia, who has the YouTube channel Kia's Bot, and it came in this Sweet lovely bag. bag and Kia's um, little logo. And this is Gotland yarn. There's no way I'm going to be able to pronounce the, the name. No, <laughs> I'll hold it up. <laughs> Um, so I got, it's it's the two-ply, it's a natural color, two-ply, and um, it feels beautiful. I can really feel the lanolin. It's quite smells. drapey for mm-hmm. um, uh, an all-natural yarn. So it's 200, it's 100 grams that has, oh, 240 meters. So it's a little everything's bit... Everything's in Swedish. Everything's in Swedish, <laughs> but the numbers make sense. Okay, 240 meters. So I've started swatching, but I used needles that were too big to begin with, so I've just changed up needles. Um, so I think I'm, I'm using... Look at us swatching. I know. I'm using US size 6 needles now, but I, which are 4 millimeters, but I started with 5 millimeter needles, and that's far too drapey. Um, mm. This is pretty drapey too but I think I'm going to give it a wash I have a feeling that this is really going to bloom Mm. and the pattern that I want to make I'm realizing now that the gauge might be not quite right with the the smaller needle size with the smaller needle size so I'm gonna have to figure out whether I want to mess around or pick another needle but the pattern I want to make is the cicleteur by acetricosa and it's an it's a really nice fitted shoulder um, sweater with broken rib and a really nice neckline, and it's yeah she uses a yarn that's similar in, in style but it's um, Belgian I think mm-hmm. that also has this a little a little bit of a halo, but I think it's slightly thicker. Hers is two hundred meters per hundred grams. This is two hundred and forty meters per hundred grams. So. I don't know. I'm gonna con- I'm gonna continue with this swatch. I'm going to wash it, measure it, and then I'll make a decision for what I want to make with it. Okay. Yeah, I like that. That pattern looks really nice, but mm-hmm. it'll be tough if your gauge is completely off. Yeah, which I think it will be. I almost feel like I might want to go down another needle size. Yeah, and then just find a different pattern. You've got. You've, you, I'm sure you have yarn for that sweater. Yeah. So that, that might better. be slightly. I might have to adjust my plans, but that's okay. Yeah. So then the other thing is... There was another acquisition. There was another acquisition. I've become obsessed with knitting or beginning to knit with the unspun roving. And this is Plotulopi. So there was a package that came from Iceland too. Yeah, quite the quite the European package cool. delivery. And I did swatch with this and I've lost the swatch. So this is interesting. It's very delicate, and it comes in these thin plates, um, yeah. and it's very easily, very easily broken. See how we just pulled that right apart. So you have to be very de- careful when you're knitting with it. And when you were swatching last night, we were like, you can't bring this on the plane because, you know, you yeah. can't have this in the bag at your feet and be pulling at it like you could from another one. And you want to have these kind of out. You don't really want your yarn all over those gross table trays. No, that's so. true. So this is going to wait. So what I want to make with this is the tulip sweater by Melody Hoffman for Anna's birthday because it's it's the flower in, in keeping with the flower theme. Mm-hmm. It seems, and this will be a good practice because I also have some neutered in yarn that I'll talk about next time. That's a little bit more fragile compared to this and I I swatched with two strands of this roving and I went to my local yarn store Driftwood yesterday and got this really fine lace weight it's a hundred percent mohair made in Germany and I've lost my okay. swatch but that's okay and um, oh. it's come out really nicely Oops. 
using um, size 8. Oh yeah, I use size 8 for my swatch too. That's right. Very different than size 2. Very different to size 2. So that'll be my cost on when I come back from my trip. I have a feeling that the tulip sweater for Anna knitting it in the smallest size is going to go really quickly. Yeah. And I really want to take Kia's Gotland yarn. So this is it in a, this is it in the cake one I wound up one skein today. I want this to be my one of my travel knitting projects. Um, so I'm going to have to figure out a really good pattern for this. I'll so probably... how many travel knitting projects are you up to? <laughs> so I'm going to have my Felix, which I'll finish. The um, socks, the chunky socks. This and my mild mania leggings. So I think that's Four? Good. Yeah, that doesn't sound like enough, does it? Oh, no, I think that's good. <laughs> so this will be... How many? Four days? Yeah, it's just four days, really. Um, this will be sort of on my, to knit on my return flight home, mm. I'm hoping. I'm hoping to finish the Felix sweater flying there. And I'm hoping to maybe finish the mild leggings actually before I go, because I don't want to be taking all those little pieces of leftover yarn, you know, yeah. or yeah. I'd have to really limit how much, what I take with me. Yeah. So that's, may not count as knitting. Anyway, that's enough. So. Okay. That was, that was a lot of knitting. There was a lot of knitting, <laughs> a lot of planning, a lot yeah. of knitting. Sometimes the logistics can be a little tricky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there was a couple of podcasts that we wanted to shout out. You've been watching, and I, I poked in a little bit too, Rogan, who is the Woolly Witchcraft. Mm-hmm. Yes, she's based in Scotland, and she has a really great um, YouTube channel, if you want to give it a look, called the Woolly Witchcraft. Yeah, and someone who we watched years ago... Um, her name is Anna, and she's Dunkelgrun on mm -hmm. YouTube and Instagram. She took about a three-year break um, and just released an episode a couple weeks ago, and Dunkelgrun oh. means dark green. Um, she's in Zurich, but I think she's originally from Austria. Oh, okay. I used to But I'm pretty sure too. she's in Switzerland right now in Zurich. Um, and yeah, I think you introduced me to her years ago and she's, mm -hmm. she has a science background. So oh, she that's would, right. she would yes. talk a lot about the chemistry of dyeing mm -hmm. and, um, making yarn. So those two, um, those two ladies are great to check out too. Yes. And to tell you the truth, I haven't watched that many knitting podcasts recently because I've been watching the curling mm -hmm. and the GB Women Won Gold. And yeah, that was they're, mo they're actually all Scottish, the GB Women. Oh, wow. Yeah. So And they had their knitted bouquets. Yeah. I watched the ceremony last night and it's really great that they're giving out knitted bouquets for the athletes because they can take them home. You know, what are you going to do with fresh flowers when you're flying home? Yeah, and they I, can have those forever. I, I'm wondering if there's going to be a knitting pattern for those. I know, I haven't seen one come out, but I bet there is something. Yeah, so that was really special. So now the Olympics are almost over, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, in the next day or two, yeah. Yeah, so I've sort of missed watching knitting podcasts, but I've got a lot to catch up on, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is fun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's, that's it, isn't it? That's about it for now, yeah. Yeah, oh, I guess I just want to say a lot of you were interested in the knit bingo, which is great. It is it is really a fun thing to do. I originally uh, got the idea from Kia, and there's a lot of people in the stitching world, cross-stitching world, mm. that do knit bingo too. They call it Whip Go. And in, in that the group of stitches, um, one lady calls out two numbers every month to knit or not to knit, for them to stitch on. And I sort of dipped in there a little bit. And for February, it was numbers 5 and 17. So that motivated me to finish a couple of projects that were in those boxes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's fun. That is fun. Okay, so I think I think that's it. There's some other things, but I think we'll save that for our next episode. Okay. Hopefully, we will get together in early March. I'm mm -hmm. going to come up and help you move. Yeah. I don't know if we'll be able to film during that. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. But um, sometime in March, in three to four weeks, we'll yeah. come back. So thank you so much for your lovely comments. Yeah. We read and enjoy them all. And, of course, thank you for watching. Hope you're all keeping well. And that you Until help. next time. Oh, yes. yeah, I cut you That's off. okay. And hobbies to keep you, to bring you joy. Yes, and yeah. help you relax. Bye.
Bye. Happy knitting. Happy knitting. Bye. Bye.